Okay guys, this is going to be a short, but I wanted to uh, not jip you out of it. So this morning I took a, a valve, I put a nice straight 45 cut on it. And I did, do think it's interesting that that blue is much wider without the back cut. Now that was at 500 thousandths. If we take a quick look at our, our flows, okay, this is no back cut. This is small back cut. They've both got the same polished uh, short side radius. So as soon as you hear about no back cut, you're like, oh, it'll reduce the amount of low lift flow. Well, not in this case. We got 41.2 versus 39.3. Is that a big deal? It depends how big your cam is. Okay. Okay, as we move down, 72.5 versus 72.9 the back cut starts coming in the back cut starts coming in now at 200 is where we really start getting into the meat of the curve right back cut helps 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 300 we're almost we're only two off but as we get down further at 500 you got six cfm difference okay so the reason you wouldn't have the back cut is you don't want the low lift flow well the way it looks to me looks like these heads like like the back back cut okay let's see what we got pop this valve out you can see oh, need two hands okay come on focus that definitely is a little bit wider than the, the last one. It definitely makes a difference with the back cut, how the fuel hits that back wall. That's certainly something to think about, right? Huh. You know what else is interesting? Take a look at this, guys. Okay. Okay, the... The stain down below is with the back cut. The stain above is the one we just did. You can certainly see the angle uh, of the airflow coming in. We got, we got, one has a lot more swirl than the other. We need to think about that as well. Unfortunately, my, my swirl, my performance trend swirl meter is having an issue. I like performance trends. They 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 have nice stuff, but they don't they don't send me any money. They should probably fix my swirl meter for free, don't you think? I doubt it. That swirl meter is like a grand, and um, I think the Relucta pickup went bad. I'm not sure. I definitely want to get it fixed though. Uh, interesting stuff. So, as far as I'm concerned. With the, with the back cut, it's got a little bit less swirl than without the back cut. I'm liking with, with the back cut a little bit better. You get a little more flow. It doesn't quite look as good on the chamber. I actually like this chamber pattern a little bit better. I like that chamber pattern a little bit better. But remember, I'm still going to, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the short side radius on these. Oh, the other thing I wanted to, to make a point of is I'm pretty sure though that spray blue is flammable. Okay. Ugh. This is what's inside the flow bench, guys. Okay. It's got a commutator with brushes, so it's arcing like freaking mad. If you spray a flammable... <laughs> A flammable substance through that. What could possibly happen? Yeah, use use the spray dike extremely sparingly. Uh, that could make that could be a bad day. <laughs> Thanks. I almost forgot to show you this, guys. Let's see if we can get in there. Definitely a little bit different. That spray pattern hits a little bit. 
with the head upside down higher near the valve face than the other ones. Now that also could have had something to do with you know, how I sprayed it, how far away I sprayed it. That, that's unfortunately you got to think about all that as well. So it's it's far from scientific. I guess to do it scientifically, I would need to build like a bracket and hold the can exactly x amount and have it so you only spray it a certain amount of seconds or less than a second, right? But it does give you an idea what's going on. Thanks.